This is GTV, a never ending fantasy land. <laughs> Across the farthest reaches of the Dona Cry galaxy, the cosmic hunters of the Cosmic Space Command are there to defend peaceful worlds from evil. One young cosmic hunter, Cobra, has already accomplished several successful missions. Two years ago, Cobra saved the planet Norg by defeating the evil Dark Princess Morgan with the help of Seyo, a direct descendant of the legendary warrior Titanus. After the decisive battle, Seyo enlisted as a cosmic hunter herself. The next year, Cobra, Seyo, and new recruit Babette liberated another planet, Idea, from the evil wizard Galum. A young native boy, Van, who was invaluable to the cause, also joined the Cosmic Space Command after saving his home world. Throughout the galaxy, the Cosmic Hunters are always on call to save the day. Now, Cobra and his friends face a new challenge, one that will determine the fate of the entire galaxy. Upon completion of his most recent mission, Cosmic Hunter Cobra and his ship, the Algernon, return to CSC home base. His assistant, Marley, and his AI module, Mother, finish safety checks and prepare for maintenance on the ship. Some downtime might do Cobra some good. Just then, a rustling is heard near the back of the ship. It's Nyan! Cobra asks what he's up to. Marley says that he's probably just returned from selling off junk, as he usually does. Nyan is upset by this characterization, and he asks the green tanuki to back off. Marley says he's not a tanuki, leading the two to start brawling in the cockpit of the ship. Cobra calls Seo to come in and help break things up. Seo says she knows just the right thing, a quick magic shock. One burst of energy is all that's needed to settle things down. Nyan tells everyone that the reason he came by was to bring Seo a present. Nyan opens the suitcase to reveal a new outfit, made from the latest plasma-based fibers that should last years. Seo is grateful, but says it's not necessary. Nyan cuts her off and sends her to go change immediately. When Seo leaves the cockpit, Cobra asks Nyan what he's really up to. Is it a scheme of some sort? Nyan replies, no. Not really. Marley doesn't even give the merchant cat a chance to finish, demanding he just tell the truth. Nyan says, no, really, it is just to be nice and give Seo something she would like. In private, Seo tries on the new outfit. She remarks that the design is basically the same as before, but says new is new and is happy about it. She comes back and asks Cobra what he thinks of her new look. He says it looks great. Sayu is pleased to hear that, but tells Nyan that the top seems too small. It was an accident, says Nyan. The others don't buy it. Sayo shocks everyone in her anger and embarrassment. Meanwhile, in another section of the galaxy, the ship Nolandia is under fire. The ship's crew panics and tries to survive the oncoming surprise attack. The perpetrator, the space pirate Gedo, makes himself known and tells the Nolandia there's nowhere to hide. The Pendant of the Princess of Planet Idea, a rare, mysterious, powerful, and beautiful thing belonging to Laura. <laughs> it was all a dream. Babette comes to bring Van some lunch and is upset that Van isn't grateful for having such a helpful partner. Babette takes a shower to try and clear her mind, but can't accept the fact that Van still thinks of Laura. Pico is hard at work analyzing data coming into the spaceship, the little fox, 
as it flies through space. Van looks out the window at the universe, wondering what will come next in his life after all that's already happened. Just then, an emergency siren blares. Robert relays the distress signal. Cosmic pirates are on the attack. Van hops in the captain's chair and takes off. Babette says, wait just a minute, reminding Van that the little fox is her ship, and she calls the shots. Robert gives the coordinates. Section OX PK-1. The ship heads there immediately. At the same time, Team Algernon has also been deployed to the same area. Commander Tokita gives the orders to join up with the little fox who will arrive at the same time. Cobra relays. Check. The Algernon is on its way. At the scene of the disturbance, space pirate Gedo asks the captain of the Nolandia of the location of the recently discovered treasures on the far-off planet Zola. The captain says those treasures are priceless and will never hand them over. Very well, the pirate says, get ready to feel my power. With that, he orders to lock on the target and attack with full firepower. The crew prepares as the laser beam charges. Prepare to fire. Just then, Team Little Fox flies by, knocking the turret from its position, saving the spaceship Nolandia. What happened? says Gedo. What is that? The first mate informs him that the cosmic hunters are here. The space pirate replies with one command, attack them. On the Little Fox, Babette, Van, Pico, and Robert argue over what to do next. Van says attack the pirate ship head on. Babette says, no way, it's far too dangerous. It's best to rescue this ship and escape since they are outmatched right now. Robert warns that three missiles are headed this way. Babette views the radar. The only way out is to somehow steer the missiles away. She maneuvers the little fox into a weaving pattern to throw off the missiles as they get closer. Van and Pico count off the distance remaining until impact. With the missile just 20 meters away, they collide into each other, exploding close enough for the ship to feel the heat. Ghetto can't believe what he sees. How could the missiles fail? Just then, Team Algernon arrives to provide backup. Cobra tells Ghetto that now that he has arrived, victory for the Cosmic Hunters is the only outcome. The first mate asks what to do. Ghetto says, don't be stupid, run! The two CSC teams recognize each other in all the chaos, with Babette thanking Cobra for coming to the rescue yet again. Mayan asks if his son Pico is all right, to which the younger cat affirms that he's fine. All seems well as the incident ends without injury to anyone. On the escaped pirate ship, Ghetto sets a course straight ahead for the planet Zola. Cobra boards the spaceship Nolandia to meet with its captain. His name is Jeff, and he offers thanks to the CSC for coming to their rescue. And not just any cosmic hunter, the famous Cobra, renowned throughout the galaxy. Cobra wonders how he got so famous. Jeff tells him that his daughter is a big Cobra fan and never stops talking about how cute he is. Hey, maybe he can get the two together. On the bridge, everyone sits down to take a break. Nyan is already eating before dinner, as he often likes to do. Van is slightly miffed as Cobra gets to speak with the captain alone, despite everyone having an equal hand in the rescue. Nyan, as he eats everything in sight, lays it down simply for Van. Cobra is a top cadet, with a handsome face and a rank much higher than everyone else. It's politics and salesmanship. As long as the food is good, just enjoy the ride. Van and Babette take offense, asking the shifty cat how he could be such a poor role model right in front of his son. Hey, Seo wonders, speaking of your son, where's Pico? Nyan says he probably went back to the little fox. It's true, and the young cat celebrates his completion of the schematics of a design he's been working on for a while now, the Kilkenny. Meanwhile, Cobra and Jeff discuss his teammates in the CSC. Does he really want to be teamed up with hunters who act so sloppy, he asks. Cobra rebuts that while Team Little Fox is green, they are official members of the CSC and are doing well under his guidance. The two of them enter the bridge. 
Jeff apologizes for making them wait, but now a large banquet is waiting for them. Just then, Babette and Jeff's eyes meet. Ah, Babette! Father! Father? They all sit down at the table. Jeff apologizes for withholding formal introductions, given the situation, but tells everyone that he is indeed the father of Babette, and thanks them all for saving the ship today. And as such, this dinner is in their honor. Nyan eats and eats. Marley scolds him and says, don't act like such a pig, to which Nyan replies, eat up or go back to the ship. Seo remarks that she had no idea Babette was related to the president of the Nolandia Trading Company. Cobra chimes in, the largest, richest, and most well-known commodity trading company in the whole galaxy. Jeff laughs and says, well, I don't know if it's that big. Van says to Babette that she doesn't seem like she wants anyone to know who her family is. Babette replies, that's because I don't. Jeff asks Babette to introduce her team members to him, and so she does. There's Seo, navigator of the Algernon, a shifty merchant cat, Nyan, Cobra's motorcycle, Marley, and Van. He's still in training and is the assistant on the little fox. Jeff asks, you mean that this boy stays with you on the ship alone? Jeff drags Van by the chair to another room, asking to have a word with him. Hey, Dad, what's the problem? Dad? Don't call me Dad. Have you been messing around with my daughter? Of course, it is every father's concern. Van shakes his head meekly to say no. Are you sure? Babette enters the room to ask what's going on in here. Oh, nothing, they say. She insists they hurry back as the food is getting cold. After she leaves, Jeff presses the issue once again, and Van swears that they are just partners. They rejoin everyone, acting like the best of friends. Cobra asks Jeff if he knows exactly why Space Pirate Ghetto attacked the ship. Babette says it seems strange, as the ship doesn't have any cargo on it. Jeff stammers and finally lays down a small, rather unusual-looking box. The legendary treasure of planet Zola. Father? Is it real? Of course it's real! Nyan asks to hear the whole story behind this mysterious treasure. Jeff hurriedly tells Nyan that of course he knows it's impossible for humans to set foot on the distant planet because the special atmosphere creates a barrier preventing entry. Seiyu and Cobra discuss what this means. Essentially, it's a dense stratosphere, like a shield. Any spaceship that tries to enter will destroy itself. Yes, of course, Jeff adds, but I have a special technology that costs a lot to develop but can withstand the pressure. And because of that, I was able to procure this treasure. And from that, says Babette, Ghetto caught word of this and came after you. But what is it? Just a box? Jeff laughs and says that this is just a protective case. The real treasure is inside. Jeff opens the box, and everyone witnesses the rare treasure firsthand. Nyan doesn't see what the big deal is, saying it looks just like a plate. Jeff says that the reason it's called the legendary secret treasure isn't so much because of its monetary worth, though its historic value is through the roof. So what does it mean? What are these markings? Nobody knows. Seo suddenly feels out of place in another time. There she stands on a barren world far away. Her name can be heard in the distance calling her. Suddenly she comes to and pleads to Cobra, please do not go to planet Zola. Nyan says, we have the treasure, so why even go back? There's no need. Maybe so, says Cobra, but it's still worth it to let Mother run an analysis to see what information she can glean from it. Babette begs her father to lend the treasure to Cobra for just a little while. Of course, he says, anything to learn more about it. On the Algernon, Mother scans the writing on the treasure to determine what language it is written in. While waiting several hours for the analysis to complete, Babette and Van talk about how much nicer the cabin of the Algernon is compared to the little fox. It seems that no matter what little thing they discuss, it always leads to a fight. In the heat of the argument, Babette falls on top of Van. 
Mayan comes in and asks what's up, only to see what he sees, and then leaves. No, it's not like that. Nayan tells Jeff what he saw and is furious that his daughter's honor would be compromised. The scan continues, and Mother lists off languages that the writing is not in, searching for what the language is. Cobra looks on, wondering what it is Seo must have felt when she saw it. What could it be that exists on Zola that makes all of this so mysterious. Mother continues scanning all known languages in the universe to determine the origin of the hidden treasure of the planet Zola. After several hours, the scan is complete. Mother reports that the language written on the golden plate matches no language on file. Seo begins to apologize for her behavior before, when Planet Zola was brought up. Before she can finish, Marley comes in telling Cobra that he has seen the writing on the plate before. Cobra asks where. Marley can't remember clearly. Mother begins a data link between her and Marley. What the readout provides is surprising. An image of a sword, Cobra remembers it well, the Grand Caliber, the sword which was handed down from the legendary hero Titanus through the generations to Seo that was wielded to defeat the evil Morgan, saving the planet. Seo asks, why does the sword have this language written on it? Cobra is uncertain, but he must find out why. He contacts Commander Tokida, head of the CSC, and relays the information. Cobra asks if he may take up the duty to learn more. The commander says he sees no reason to deny the request, to which Cobra thanks him sincerely. The call ends, the monitor goes black. In silence, he remarks how Cobra and his spirit remind him of his youth and his own team from those days gone by. Meanwhile, space pirate Gedo is on the way to planet Zola. His first mate informs him that the spaceship Nolandia has left its current position and is also heading for Zola. Gedo gives the order to cloak the ship and follow closely once the cosmic hunters are near. Eventually, the ships do pass by and the pirates follow. Once the ships reach planet Zola, the team must embark on a new vessel. Pico, with a keen eye, notices the special design of three layers with a seamless outer casing that can withstand the atmosphere of Zola. The vessel is equipped with a plasma emission system that will keep the ship protected under the atmospheric pressure. Babette wonders aloud to Nyon if Pico could really be his son. Jeff tells Cobra and Seo it's time to board the vessel. Before they leave, Nyon quips that he gets a cut of any treasure found on the surface. The others watch as the vessel disconnects from the main ship. The countdown begins and the cosmic hunters enter the atmosphere of the mysterious planet Zola. As the ship pushes through the dense atmosphere of Zola, the ship shakes under the gravitational pull. 60 seconds remain until surface impact. The plasma system initiates. Suddenly, the ship stops shaking and cools down as it reaches the planet's surface. Seo remarks how beautiful the planet is. It's like nothing ever seen before. Cobra says that something must have sent Seo a telepathic message through the plate. Seo replies that the vision was nothing like we see here, but if it's a dangerous place, she always has Cobra to protect her. Jeff interrupts. Should we land now? Right, says Cobra. Let's find a safe place to land. After touchdown, Jeff says, let's go. Cobra asks if it's fine to just wear regular clothes. No spacesuit? No preparation? Jeff laughs and says he's been here before. He knows it's safe. There's not a single thing that's dangerous here. With one step on Zola, Jeff finds himself abducted by a strange alien creature. Jeff cries for help, 
Cobra and Seo jump off the ship and attack the giant monster with laser firepower and magic bursts. One shot from Cobra's blaster severs the monster's tongue, freeing Jeff, who falls to the ground. Cobra yells out to Jeff to get to a safe place as fast as he can. Cobra takes aim again at the eye of this alien beast, but the monster comes closer, using its long neck to strike at Cobra, who gets out of the way just in time. Seo sends off a blast of her signature spell, Boltane. A miss! The monster uses its massive tail to swipe at Seo, knocking her to the ground. Cobra rushes to her aid as the alien hovers above. Cobra asks Seo if she's fine. All she can say is that she's glad Cobra isn't hurt at all. She begins to apologize that she... The monster screeches! With no time to talk, Cobra makes a final stand against the alien, knowing he must fight with his all or perish. Summoning all of his energy, Cobra emits a powerful blast of psychic power, sending a shockwave outward at this giant beast. When the energy makes contact, the alien explodes with nothing left behind. Seo says she's sorry. Her attacks did nothing. Cobra says it's no problem, but that it's time to head back to the ship. He wonders how Jeff is and tells Seo that she might need to change before venturing further. For the meantime, Cobra offers his jacket. Back at the ship, Jeff is fine, but very shaken. Cobra tells Jeff he needs to tell the others about this monster while they take a rest to recover from the battle. On the spaceship Nolandia, the others are shocked to hear what has happened. Cobra says he will need some more time to investigate what this mysterious planet Zola is all about, and if this monster sighting is an isolated incident or a common occurrence. Unbeknownst to the cosmic hunters, space pirate Gedo is listening in on their conversation. Seo learns the ancient secrets hiding on Zola, while Nyan and Pico have a father-son bonding moment. Cobra battles Ghetto one-on-one, while Team Little Fox comes through in the clutch. Next time, Cosmic Fantasy Stories Part 2. We'll see you there.